Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Company also bring you the Kraft Music Hall every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Nowadays, society gives you the green light when you tip your plate of soup, or mop up gravy with a dab of bread, or leave your plate clean as a whistle. We wartime Americans have gladly discarded many wasteful rules of etiquette to make food fight for freedom. The all-important rule these days is waste no food, eat every scrap. Of course, one way to be sure that all the food you serve gets eaten is to present it in tempting, appetizing ways. And I do know this. You'll enjoy bread rolls and muffins down to the very last crumb when they're spread with delicious parquet margarine. Ah, yes, ma'am, parquet's delicate flavor really satisfies. Adds to your enjoyment of many fine foods. And since parquet margarine is so very high in energy value... It's really a wonderful aid to good family nutrition. Remember, too, that each pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So get the nutritious spread that's known far and wide for its truly fine flavor. Buy parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's see what goes on at the home of the great Doc Martin P. Gildersleeve. It's Saturday evening, the day before Halloween, and his niece is giving a dance. All afternoon, he's been rolling up carpets, putting extra leaves in the dining room table, carrying out furniture, and carrying it in again. But now that the heavy work is done, he finds himself brushed aside. After an early makeshift supper, he wanders forlornly out to the kitchen to watch last-minute preparations there. Oh, what are you making there, Bertie? Frosting? Yes, sir. Say, that looks mighty good. Do you mind if I just... Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Mr. Gillsleeve, a man can lose a finger that way. Mm, um, um, it's wonderful, though, Bertie. Say, don't you think you've beaten that about enough? Ain't sure if it's stiff enough. Oh, well, I'll just see. Oh, the Lord, really? Just tasting it, my dear. Mr. Gillsleeve, if you keep tasting, there ain't gonna be frost enough to put in your eye. Who wants it in his eye? You'd like to put a lid on a piece of bread now. Oh, Lord, go out and play. Yes, go out and play. Bertie, don't you think it's about time we drink another peek at that cake? Cake? I'll do it. Stay away from that oven. Oh, oh excuse me, Mr. Gillsleeve, but you want that cake to fall? Uh, I was just trying to help. Run along, Uncle Mort. I'll look at the cake, Bertie. You either. What? If some of the people don't get out of this kitchen, I'm going to go clean out of my mind. Well, Bertie, I was just Were Well, you more trouble than all the rest of them. Yeah. Want me to fix a party? You got to give me a chance. I ain't no Superman. No, sir. All I got is two hands. Painter come in here, track and dirt. Come on, Marjorie. I think Bertie wants that. to be alone. Let's go in the other room. After you. <laughs> oh, Leroy, for heaven's sake. I am Frankenstein the Wolf Man. I eat up little girls. Let go. I walked with a zombie. The undying monster. Leroy. The living dead. Stop that and take off that mask. It's only me, Unc. Did I scare you? Yes. I don't know how you expect to scare anybody. You've been going around that rig scaring people for a week. Well, I'm just practicing being horrible. You don't need any practice. <laughs> now, Uncle Mort, you make him promise to keep away from my party. I just know he's going to... Oh, oh, that's probably for me. Don't worry, glamour puss. I wouldn't be caught dead at your party. Hello? Is that you? No, it's me. <laughs> oh, I couldn't tonight, Lester. No, I'm sorry. No, I couldn't possibly. Why don't you tell him you're giving a party and he's not invited? Shut up, Leroy. Let her alone, Leroy. Pardon the interruption. The brat again. Go on, tell me all about it. I don't know what kind of a Halloween party this is anyway. No games, no pumpkins. <laughs> what did you used to do on Halloween, Unc? Oh, we did a lot of things, my boy. Made jack-o'-lanterns? Bobbed for apples? Pretty corny. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Well, uh, <laughs> we had one little trick. Yeah? What was it? Well, we used to take two buckets of water. Yeah? And when it got dark, we'd put them on each side of somebody's front walk, and we'd tie them together with a piece of cord across the walk, and then when somebody came along, well, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. Uh, it was a very thoughtless, wicked thing to do, Leroy. <laughs> I hope you will never do anything like that. Are you kidding? You... I mean it. Somebody might trip and hurt themselves badly. Remember that. Yes, sir. 
There's one other thing to remember. What's that? Only fill the buckets halfway. It won't work if they're full. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go to the door, somebody. I'm on the phone. Well, get off it. I'll go. Oh, I've got to hang up now. Goodbye, Lester. Yeah, so much for Lester. It's Wally Hoff. Uh, Wally Hoff. Well, the kid himself. Hiya, Junior. What are you supposed to be? Frankenstein. Oh, blow me down. Talk to Wally, will you, Uncle Mort? I'll be right down, Wally. I've got to run up and put on some lipstick. What for? It's coming right off. <laughs> Uh, uh, take these records, will you, son? And don't drop them. Cu- got a couple of real oldies there. Red nickels. Gosh. Uh, uh, Mr. Hoff, my name is Gildersleeve. I'm Marjorie's uncle. Oh, hi. Heard a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you, too. Favorable, I trust. Anybody tune in tune this so-called piano lately? Young man, that's a Wembley. Oh, not bad. Hey, Wally, I can play a boogie bass now like you showed me. Look. That's not it. Look out. I didn't do it right. Let me just... Look out. Let me at it. You like music, Mr. Gildersleeve? I like music, yes. Mr. Hoff, would you mind telling me something? Not at all. Shoot. That sweatshirt you're wearing, is that customary these days? At dances, I mean? What else? In my day, we wore tuxedos. And we didn't wrestle. We danced. Oh, your day, your day. Your day is over, Uncle Mort. Yes, yes, I guess it is. Well, don't stop. Wally, give out. What'll it be, gorgeous? Oh, anything at all, only give. The party's dying and it hasn't even started. Mark, I don't want to be rushing you, but the gang will be here any minute. I can take a hint. Well, take Leroy with you. Why don't you see if Mrs. Ransom's doing anything tonight? Maybe I will, and maybe I won't. Oh, that's it. Play that. On with the dance. Let joy be unrefined. Oh, brother, even in my... Come on, Frankenstein. This is no place for us. Uh, Wally Hoff. He's a swell piano player, Unc. You stick to Bach. That sounds like Piggy. Hey, Pig, wait up. That's his signal. See you later, Unc. Wait a minute. Yeah? I won't ask you to keep out of mischief, Leroy. Just keep out of jail. (laughs) Okay. Where are you going, Mrs. Ransom? Never mind. Run along. Hey, Pig, wait for Frankenstein. Nobody's going to tell me what I'm going to do. If I want to call on Leela, I will. And if I don't, I won't. Just hope she's in, that's all. Who's that? Boo! Oh, boo! Yeah. Rock Morton, you mustn't do that. Yeah, but it's Halloween, Leela. No, it's not. Tomorrow's Halloween. I know, but they're celebrating it tonight. What are you doing, Leela? Well, I had this date for tonight, but at the last minute I was unable to go on account of a headache. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. Well, perhaps some other time. Oh, I feel much better now. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, isn't that lucky? Will you go to the movies with me? Well, I don't know about tonight's Rock Morton. I'm just scared to death of ghosts and witches and all. Oh, don't worry. I'll be with you. Uh, promise you'll stay close to me and protect me? I'd like to see the ghost that you get between us. <laughs> there'll be a slight wait inside for all seats. Oh, he says there'll be waiting, Rod Martin. How many, please? How long will we have to wait, Miss? The next complete showing will begin at nine fifty-three. How many, please? Nine fifty-three. That's half an hour, Leela. Do you want to wait? Well, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? Oh, make up your mind. Oh. Stepping to one side, please. Keeping the line moving, please. Shutting the mouth, please. <laughs> Slot Martin. Well, they can't push me around. Evidently, our patronage is not wanted here, Leela. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> Class, Rock Martin, I've never seen Summerfield so crowded. Why don't these people stay home nights? Uh, well, I suppose we could at least drop in here and get a soda. Would you like a soda? I don't know. Would you? Oh, I don't know. Would you? Uh, oh, look, a little boy in a mask. Well, uh, that's more like it. That's the first real sign of Halloween. Oh, well, what's that thing he's swinging around? Oh, that's a sock filled with flour. Oh, uh, we used to have more fun with those. Oh, he isn't going to hit somebody with it. <laughs> what do you think it's for? Uh, Hello, little boy. Yeah, hello there, Sonny. What's your name? Uh, oh, cat got your tongue, huh? 
You're not piggy banks, are you? You're not going to hit anybody with that, are you, little boy? Yes, careful now. Careful how you swing that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you go away, I'll give you a nickel. Listen, if you hit anybody... Look out now. If you're Piggy Banks, I'll tell your mother. Did you hear what I said? If you come near me with that, I'll... <laughs> come back here, you. I dare you. <laughs> Let me brush you off, Frogmore. Well, I think you might show a little more consideration, Leela. Oh, but you look so funny, darling. Come on, let's go in and get a show. Well... Oh, hello, Mrs. Ransom. Oh, good evening, Mr. Peavy. And Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, has it been snowing out? <laughs> no, it hasn't been snowing. The lady here would like a soda. Well, aren't you going to have anything, Frockmore? I got something. Oh, well, if you're not going to have anything, I'm not going to have anything. All right. Soda for me, too. Chocolate. Chocolate, it shall be. How have you been, Mr. Peavy? Oh, just fine, Mrs. Ransom, just fine. Uh, you two been out doing the town? Well, if you could call it that. Halloween isn't what it used to be, Peavy. No, Mr. Gildersleeve, it isn't. And maybe it's just as well. Why? Well, I remember one Halloween. Uh, Harry, it's a lucky thing we didn't all land in jail. Well, what did you do, Mr. Peavy? Well, you know how boys are, Mrs. Ranson. I remember it was a dark night like this one. I, it, it was out at old Mr. Thatcher's house. Crabby old fellow. Maybe you remember the house, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, I remember it. Well, we'd planned this thing for weeks, and it was dark, as I say, so we appointed one boy as a lookout, and then we hid in the bushes till the coast was clear. Oh, yeah? Go on. Then when we got the signal, we sneaked across the lawn. Yeah? We tiptoed up the front steps. Uh-huh. And crawled on our hands and knees across the porch. Yeah? And stuck a pin in his doorbell. <laughs> P.B., you didn't. Yes, sir, and I want to tell you, I got out of there just fast as my legs would carry me. P.B., I wouldn't have believed it if you hadn't told me yourself. Well, I, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I didn't actually stick the pin in the bell myself. Oh? I stayed behind in the bushes. But if they ever found out that that pin came out of my lapel... It just came out of my lapel. <laughs> Rockmore, you know what I think? Know what? I think we ought to have a Halloween party, an old-fashioned one where you bob for apples and stick pins and things. Oh, but it's too late, Leela. Oh, no, it's not. Tomorrow's Halloween, really. We could have it at your house. But Leela... Oh, don't be an old killjoy. Now, who we have? Oh, you come, on to Mr. Peavy? Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to, Mrs. Ransom. You see, Mrs. Peavy gets a little nervous around Halloween, so I usually stick pretty close to home till it blows over. Oh, too bad. Well, there, there's Judge Hooker. We'll have to have the judge. Yeah, for laughs. Now, who else? Well, we ought to have another girl. Oh, do you think we need to? Uh, for the judge. You know, the old goat likes to think he's Sir Walter Raleigh. Oh, well, who can we get? I don't seem to know many women somehow. Oh, well, there's a Miss um, Goodwin, I think her name is. Goodwin? I don't seem to recall. Uh, I only know her slightly. Oh, well, how does it happen I've never heard you mention her before? Well, I say I know her. I've met her, that's all. She's the principal of the school. Oh, a school teacher. Yeah, a school teacher. Oh, well, that sounds perfect for the judge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you know her, don't you, P.B.? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. She's perfect for the judge. <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfect for the judge. <laughs> She can't be that perfect. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I'd say that she was... <clears throat> Thanks for the sodas, Peavy. <laughs> Gotta be running along. Oh, but, Strockmorton, I've hardly finished. Gotta get going before the crowd gets out of the movie. Oh, gracious, how you rush again. Oh, forgot to pay. Peavy, did anybody ever tell you you talk too much? Oh, I know. Well, I... consider yourself told. Good night, Peavy. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. These days, everyone's interested in good, satisfying food, and everyone knows that flavor is mighty important. Yes, it's flavor that makes us enjoy the foods we eat. It's flavor that tempts hungry appetites. That's why Kraft, the maker of parquet margarine, is so particular about fine flavor in this delicious spread for bread. Parquet's flavor is something you'll want to tell your friends about. It's so delicate and appetizing, the margarine that tastes so good. And right along with its tempting flavor... Parquet margarine is wonderfully nutritious, too. It's one of the best energy foods you can serve your family. And while we're on the subject of good nutrition, remember that every single pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. 
Parquet is a quality margarine that bears the seal of acceptance of the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. So for flavor to satisfy your family and for the kind of nourishment they need, serve Parquet every day. Ask your dealer for Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. here at last, and the great Gildersleeve is ready for it, come what may. Leroy has carved a pumpkin, and Bertie has prepared some refreshments. Don't they teach you any poetry in school these days, Leroy? Oh, sure. I woke up in the morning and looked upon the wall. There was a flea in a bed bug having a game of ball. <laughs> Leroy, you didn't learn that poem in school. Oh, I did, too. Piggy taught it to me during geography. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, George. I'm going to ask your teacher to change your seat. I can see Piggy's a bad influence on you. I doubt if Leroy's doing Piggy any good either. Oh, is that so? Who asked you to put in your two cents? Well, you're certainly just as bad as Piggy. I suppose his sister's been shooting off her big mouth. Leroy? She has not. Well, I could tell a few things about you and her and Wally Hoff. For instance... Quiet! I'm expecting guests here any minute. Do you think I want them to walk into this kind of a cat and dog fight? Well, he's out of it. Stop it. They're all finish it. I'll not have this kind of goings on. Leroy, where are you going? Out on the porch. What for? Oh, well, that's all right, then. It's a very good idea. Make a cheery welcome for my guests. Uh, what are your plans, Marjorie? Would you like to stay here and enjoy a little old-fashioned Halloween fun for a change? Oh, gee, do I have to? Certainly not, my dear. What were you thinking of doing this evening? Well, Wally and I were going down to Brownie's Beanery for a while. Some of the gang's going to be there. Uh, I certainly dislike that boy. Oh, he grows on you, Uncle Moore. Why, George, you won't get a chance to grow on me. <laughs> Hi-ho. Well, I'll have a real Halloween anyway. I'll see how Leroy's coming with the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, real Halloween air. Gosh, dark as a pants pocket out here. Where is that kid? Oh, uh, Leroy! Hi, Unc. <laughs> I didn't see you, Leroy. Confound it. How many times have I told you it's not funny to scare people? I wasn't trying to scare you. You called me and I asked. Well, all right, but be careful. Why haven't you lit the jack-o'-lantern? The, the wind keeps blowing out the matches. That's nonsense. There's no wind at all tonight. It comes in puffs. Yeah. <laughs> well, give me those matches, and I'll show you how a woodsman lights a fire. Where's the woodsman? Just watch me. Okay. Say, isn't this Judge Hooker coming? Where? I don't see anybody. Oh, well, it may be at that. Hello, Judge. Hi, Gildy. Yeah, trust him to get here first. Hi, Judge. Hello, Leroy. Well, Doc Morton, happy Halloween. Am I the first one? Oh, no! Oh, it works! Oh. Leroy here. Yeah. <laughs> Confound it, Gildersleeve, what's the idea? It wasn't my idea, Judge, but anyway, happy Halloween. Yeah. Just stand here by the fire, Judge, and you'll be dry in no time. Doggone that kid. <laughs> now, Judge, boys will be boys. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if you put him up to it. Why, Horace. And you laughed. Well, I couldn't help it. I'm always laughing. Now, cheer up, Judge. Well, maybe that's my girl. Your girl? Miss Goodwin. What makes you think she's your girl? All right, I'm easy to please. I'll take Leela. Oh, no, you won't. Leela's my girl, you old goat. I'd rather be a goat than a hog. <laughs> Come in. We were just talking about you. I knew it. I could feel my ears burning. Yeah, they're still pink at that. <laughs> uh, let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Oh, my, the house looks lovely. I think Halloween decorations are so exciting, don't you? I certainly do. Oh, good evening, Horace. Good evening, Leela. What a wonderful idea, coming in your old clothes. I just love old clothes parties. This is my new suit, Leela. Or it was when I left home. Oh. What? What happened? Gildersleeve's little nephew played a Halloween prank that soaked me to the skin. Oh, how awful. That doesn't sound like Leroy Throckmorton. It's my idea of Leroy. Oh, mercy. The judge might have caught pneumonia. Oh, don't worry about me, Leela. I'm a pretty tough old rooster. Oh, why, well, let's forget all about it and have a nice Halloween. Uh, where's your lady friend, Horace? Miss Goodwin? Oh, she's not my lady friend. Not according now, to... Now, Horace, can't you take a joke? <laughs> <laughs> 
seems to me I'm being asked to take a good many this evening. Oh, uh, that must be Miss Goodwin now, Judge. Why don't you go and let her in? Well, thank you. Uh, what did Horace mean about her not being his lady friend, Frock Martin? Oh, nothing. Just his peculiar sense of humor. Ah. Uh. Uh, Ah, good evening, Miss Goodwin. Good evening, Judge Hooker. So nice to see you again. Permit me to take your rest. Trock Morton? Yes, Leela? I thought you said she was a school teacher. She is, Leela. Well, she dresses like the school teachers in Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leela. Here we are. Mrs. Ransom, may I present Miss Goodwin? How do you do? It's so nice to meet you. Good evening, Trock Morton. Well. Uh, hello, Eve. Well, <laughs> why didn't you tell me, Miss Goodwin, and you were such old friends, Throckmorton? Well, <laughs> since he's been on the school board, we've seen a good deal of each other, Mrs. Ransom. Ah, she. Well, well, <laughs> nothing so much fun as a Halloween party, is there? Or is there? <laughs> the right technique for apple bobbing, Judge. Oh. You have to follow the apple right down to the bottom and get your teeth in it. Oh, I could never do that. I'd ruin my hair. I wouldn't mind. Let me try it. Well! Uh, yes, I'll show you, Eve. Stand back, everybody. Wait a minute, Gilly, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, you will now witness a death-defying exhibition by Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, diving into one foot of water from the stupendous height of... Six inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Horace, y'all simply a scream. I declare I think you're funnier than Bob Hope. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Yeah, neither would I. Look, I'll show you now how to get the apple. How you doing, Gildy? Uh, Mercy Throckmorton, come up for air. You'll drown. Don't worry about it, Mrs. Ransom. He has wonderful breath control. Well... <laughs> Sleeve. You look exactly like a roast pig. <laughs> I know what we ought to do now. Let's tell ghost stories. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Eve. I know a real thriller. Oh, ghost stories never scare me. Well, it'll scare you if we turn out the lights. Turn off the lights, will you, Judge? All right. There. I'm still not a bit scared. Uh, you will be. Once there was an old haunted house way out on the edge of a swamp. <laughs> there was a ghost in the house who was trying to find his murdered wife. And he used to go through the house every night at midnight saying, Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh I'm frightened already. Yeah, I'm a little nervous myself. Oh, poo. It, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, one night, some hunters were passing near the house when it got real dark. And not knowing the reputation of the place, they decided to spend the night there. So they went up to the door... And just then... Oh, Throckmorton, this is silly. I think it's fun. Uh, I know a game that's lots more fun in the dark than telling ghost stories. Uh, oh? Well, what is it, Leela? Sardines. Yeah. I never heard of it. Never heard of sardines? No. Oh, well, the way you play it, one person hides in the dark, and then all the others try to find him. Or her. And uh, when you find the person, you don't say anything. You just stand as close to him as you possibly can till all the others find you. That's sardines. Oh, well, I can see it's got possibilities. <laughs> yeah, let's try it. Miss Goodwin, why don't you be the first to hide? Well, Horace, I suggested the game. Now, you can hide next. Yeah, very fair, Judge. Go ahead and hide, Eve, while I count 50. <laughs> well, I, I don't know any places, but... Oh, all right. All right. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Oh, all right, Eve. Give me 50. Oh, all right. Here we come. <laughs> uh, who left that chair there? Oh, doggone it! <laughs> the judge is having a little trouble, too, I can see. 
what's this? <laughs> Ralph Throckmorton. Who is it? You ought to know. What am I supposed to do now? Stand close to me. Uh, uh can't stand any closer, can I? <laughs> what's going on here, anyhow? Hey, no fair turning on the lights. Gildersleeve. Now, Leela. Well, if I'd known there were this kind of people in the game, I never would have suggested it. Mrs. Ransom. Don't you try to shush me. I wonder if you'd mind taking me home, Judge. But, Eve, the party's just begun. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's all over. Now, wait a minute. Leela, please. Eve, please. Leela. Oh, who invented Halloween anyway? don't understand. I understand very well, Throckmorton. Take me home, please. But they've all gone, Leela. I want to explain. There's nothing to explain. I turn the lights on and I find you pawing that school teacher. Leela, if you could just listen. Let go of my arm, please, Throckmorton. Will you open the door for me? Oh, God. Thank you. Now, do you want me to walk home by myself? I'll take you if you're really determined. Leela. School teacher. She must be a fine school teacher. Well, she is. Oh, that's right. Stick up for her. I'm not sticking up for her. She didn't do anything. I I thought she was you. Throckmorton, that's a ridiculous bare-faced fib. She's wearing Chanel number no. five, and I always use Shalimar. Well. <laughs> Leela, I don't know one perfume from another. To me, they both smell good. I don't care to hear any more, Throckmorton. Oh, oh, oh look out! <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Good night, Throckmorton. You can't leave me here in this. Wait till I get my hands on Leroy. Don't blame Leroy, Gildy. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Music heard on this program was under the direction of Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This year, thousands of women all over the country are discovering what a special help with wartime meals is the product called Kraft Dinner. A box of Kraft Dinner gives them enough delicious macaroni and cheese for four people at only a few cents a serving. They get two boxes of Kraft Dinner for only one single ration point. And with Kraft Dinner, they cook that delicious main dish in just seven minutes. In every Kraft Dinner box, there's a special macaroni that cooks fluffy tender in boiling water and an envelope of Kraft Grated. With this handy Kraft Grated, you whisk cheese goodness through and through the fluffy macaroni in a jiffy. A very smart trick is to shape the hot Kraft Dinner in a ring mold for a minute or two, unmold on a platter, and serve with creamed vegetables or fish or a little meat. But just as is, Kraft Dinner gives you a mighty fine main dish. Try this seven-minute macaroni and cheese soon. At your food store, be on the alert for point-saving Kraft Dinner. This is the National Broadcasting Company.